rhythm is one of the key aspects of swimming. So here you can do a drill standing in a pool where you're leaving your hand in front until the other hand comes forward. So make sure that that's the rhythm that you have. You can speed it up and practice really grabbing the water and pushing the water from in front of you to behind you. That's what you wanna do in swimming. Grab the water from in front of you, push it to behind you. Here's what not to do. If you've got a slow stroke that is the same speed in your pool and in your recovery, this is what you look like. Your rhythm's very slow and even paced all the way around. No power in the catch and no fast, relaxed recovery. Here's what happens if you have a rhythm that stops at the end and the front. So you're basically pausing when one hand is at the back and one hand is at the front and then you move the other hand when the other one comes forward. So you're pausing at the back and catching too early in this instance. That's not what you wanna do. Here, this is back to good rhythm. Leaving the hand in front until the other hand comes forward. The first thing you do is bend the wrist to get the fingers down towards the bottom of the pool, which would grab the water and pull through towards behind you, past your hip. So this is what not to do. If you've got a slow rhythm where you're kind of the same speed the whole way through your stroke, you're going to have no power in your catch and you're going to be very slow in your recovery. Don't be scared to make a splash when your hand enters the water. If you've got a very controlled, careful re uh, recovery, you're losing a lot of time and a lot of energy and efficiency. So this is what happens if you're a person who catches too early. You end up sinking and losing all momentum. So what happens is that you're catching while your other hand is still up over your head and you're losing all momentum because you're far too much on your side when you are catching. It's exaggerated when you catch, when you breathe and the other arm will catch really early. That's a bad habit and hard one to break. So don't catch early. Another problem that a lot of people have is that they're lifting their eyes out when all they need to get out of the water is their mouth. So keep the crown of your head pointed towards the end of the pool straight in front of you at all times. Think about that. Where is the crown of your head pointing? So all you need to get out of the water is your mouth. So here's what happens when you catch too early on a breath. So you may have good rhythm, but every time you breathe, you're losing that rhythm. Here's a quick demonstration of how to skull. Hands back and forward, so that you're getting that feeling of when the hand, fingers are pointed slightly towards the bottom of the pool, that's where your start of the catch begins. Use flippers for this, if you wanna feel a bit more momentum and feel the speed that catching can give you. So here we've got slow motion of a good rhythm. So you can see that my hand is not close to my body. My hand stays out in front until my other hand has come past my head before it starts to catch. I'm not trying to keep my hand or elbow close to my body. My shoulders are rotating with every stroke. I'm not crossing over the center of my body with my catch underneath me. And that's all that's required for good rhythm. Leave your hand in front until the other hand has come past your head. So you can see my shoulders are rotating. So even though it looks like my elbow is quite high, compared to the line that my back has, it's actually not coming much at, or if at all behind the line of my back. So if you're not rotating very much, you'll need to keep your elbow even wider because we're not that flexible in older age to get our elbow behind our back. So think about having a hand and elbow wide in your recovery. Having a relaxed recovery is key. Don't be afraid to make a splash. Really relaxed hand. Ignore the fact that my hand is a bit angled and my thumb is hitting first. It doesn't matter if your thumb hits first or if your hand hits more flat. 
but just make sure that it's relaxed and you're making a splash and it's not overly controlled. So focus on technique now. My fingers catch first, they go towards the bottom of the pool. So my wrist bends, then my elbow bends, and I push the water and keep my fingers pointed to the bottom of the pool until my hand exits the water. Here I could probably try and exaggerate that extension past my hip for a good drill, or maybe just to get better technique. So think about the first thing that catches is your wrist bends as your fingers go down, then you bend your elbow, and then you extend and push your tricep and your hand through past your hip. That's all that you need for technique. Bend your fingers, wrist, elbow, push it past your hip. And just don't start that process until the other hand has come past your head. And there you can see catching. Exaggerating catch up is an excellent drill. Maybe put flippers on if it helps you keep your momentum until you've got a bit more power and momentum for this to feel good. But you can swim fast and hard with a catch up. So make sure that if you're doing catch up, you're not slowing down the rest of your stroke. You would only be slowing down the pause at the front the catch and recovery are still done fast so that you're not swimming slow, you're just swimming with more of a pause in front. An excellent drill to do. And then when you're swimming well, like this, I may not be doing catch up technically, but I'm pretty close to it. For catch up, you would leave your hand in the water, below the water about six inches in the position that my hand is now and that's where you would leave your hand until the other hand touches the water like now and catch. So basically I'm doing a catch up drill in this one, leaving my hand until that hand touches the water and then catching. So don't need, no need to touch your other hand when you're doing a catch up drill. So it's rhythm, technique, and streamline are the key things. So you can see that my hips are quite high in the water because I'm using my feet to elevate the back of my body. You can see that my feet are always breaking the surface and I'm using them to push my hips up. As I push down on the front of my foot, I'm using it pushing from my hip and raising my hips up. So you can see that when I'm breathing, I'm only getting my mouth out of the water not both eyes, only really about one, one and a half eyes come out, keeping the crown of my head down. That's key to keeping your hips up also. Get your mouth out of the water, but keep your head facing forward and down. Make sure that when you do breathe, you look back almost at a 45 degree angle underneath your armpit pit. That keeps the crown of your head facing forward and keeps your spine nice and straight. Don't look sideways when you breathe. Make sure you're looking backwards under your armpit. 